a little, I guess, birthday gift to myself is this video. I love One Piece more than any other anime. It's been with me almost as long as Pokemon has. The Sunny is my home. The Straw Hats, my family. And Robin, my wife. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. But making One Piece characters into Pokemon was an interesting experience. Unlike TF2 where I went off more their class and personality, these ones are trying to go closer to what they look like. Ichiro Oda has said before what each straw hat would be as an animal, so I did follow this for a few, and others I went a little wild on. So come aboard and bring along all your expectations, because I probably won't give you everything you're looking for. Man, you are also lucky I didn't do the four kids rap for the opening. Let's go through each Pokemon from their addition to the Straw Hat crew. Although, I should warn you, spoilers for characters in full, nothing will be kept hidden while I talk about them during their process videos. However, here are all the time codes for the Dex entries, which will be much more spoiler free. Relatively. Maybe stay away from Luffy's. I don't know, it's a little gamey. Speaking of Luffy, let's start with the technical first Straw Hat. Thank you. Greedy pig! I'm gonna eat three whole days worth of food, lady. Oh. The man, the myth, the icon, Monkey D. Luffy, and for this I chose a sparrow. No, I'm kidding, of course, I chose a monkey for Luffy. I mean, Oda said it's kind of in the name, it's a monkey. <laughs> I did a bunch of designs for Gear 5 Luffy Pokemon, but I hated them. So I went back to just a normal design and used Luffy's time skip design for our monkey mon. I wanted it to keep the iconic red shirt and the yellow to use as a tail, but this kind of come off as a bit blasphemy, I'm sure, but I didn't actually include a straw hat. No matter what, I feel like it would have looked a bit too goofy trying to integrate the hair or something else into the hat. And still, when Luffy is in combat, he totally has that thing down. Otherwise, it would be flying all over the place. The pose I wanted is showing off its goofy side as well as those funky monkey rubber powers in the twirly arm. I think that this design is pretty good for the most part, although the colours maybe I'd go back and change simply because it looks a tad off. But hey, these are the colours of monkeys anyway. I love Luffy, so I hope if he ever saw this he would be happy with it, or he might be mad that I actually attributed him to a monkey, I don't know. Has he ever really been called that in the series? A monkey? This Pokemon's name, Liberiki, is based on Liberation and Kiki, the monkey onomatopoeia in Japanese. And for the whole Liberation thing, well, big spoils, but yeah, drums of Liberation and the true nature of the gum gum fruit and all that. Liberiki, the Liberation Pokemon, a normal and multi-type Pokemon. This Pokemon spends much of its time energetically exploring the world, when it isn't devouring every berry in sight. Its long limbs and rubber-like body allows Liberiki to go almost anywhere and be unimpeded. Even when it's battling other Pokemon and a Pokemon tries to keep it restrained, Liberiki breaks free of those chains. It's fast to make friends with Pokemon due to its happy-go-lucky nature, and it's rare to see one alone. Bands of Pokemon travel with Liberiki all with their own goals and motivations, and Liberiki will help them reach them all. That's just how kind and caring this Pokemon is. Because of this Pokemon's rubber-like powers, it is capable of doing amazing feats, and many have said that it may just be the power of Liberiki's imagination that is truly creating these unlimited possibilities. Some Liberikis are even capable of expanding their body and limbs to unimaginable sizes. Liberiki's ability is Drums of Liberation. The user's secondary type changes to the move it is about to use. When it does change its type, it will cure itself of any status ailment that is impeding it. Let's give Luffy a team as well. Starting with Liberiki, I'd also give him an Infernape. I thought maybe Annihilate, but I think Infernape is more fitting, especially as it works great with the Ace callback and being a monkey. Then for the Thousand Sunny, I'm giving him Solgaleo. I mean, the Sunny is kind of a robotic ship and so is Solgaleo and Lions and all that. And Luffy is legendary as well. I'm also gonna give Luffy a Graplock because he's got himself a pet Kraken who's all about punching on. Then Darmanitan, it's kind of both a combo of Ace and Sabo. And finally, to round out the team, let's go with Snorlax, who's big like Luffy when he's ballooning and he loves to eat. Luffy, it's good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Next on the Straw Hat train is Zoro. What a cool character. I used to hate Zoro when I was younger. 
don't know why you'd think a cool stoic swordsman would appeal to younger me, but no. Nowadays, after watching rewatching, I like Zoro a lot more. He's cool and loyal and has some of the best character development in the series. Oda said that Zoro would be a tiger, which I can totally see, but you know what's cooler than that? Dinosaurs. Yeah, so when I was thinking about what animal to use for this, I knew one dinosaur that would work so well for Zoro. Sword fingers and all. It's the Ferrazinosaurus. Now, obviously, I know that these dinosaurs have a, like, a lot more than three claws, so I did improvise a little bit. Ferrazoro's hands are the fluffy parts, and they can extend one blade claw on each hand, and one on the tail, which reminds me of that image of Zoro holding one of his blades between the cheeks. I base this Pokemon's color scheme and outfit on Zoro's Wano design, so it's got a kind of kimono look to it, which I think at this point is pretty dang iconic for him, and because it's a time skip design, I included the closed cut eye that he has, although in the Pokemon I imagine it's more like the eye still works, that's just what it looks like. I chose Grass Steel for the typing here, Steel is obvious, but I thought Grass was funny for the whole him being called a moss head deal, and yes, I know fighting works, but you know how many characters would have fighting type in this series? Like, literally everyone. Ferrazoro, the free blade Pokemon, a Grass and Steel type. Ferrazoro are a loyal Pokemon that will stop at nothing to protect the one they are loyal to, throwing their life on the line to make sure they achieve their dreams. Ferrazoros cannot live in the same territory as they are prideful and want to prove their strength above the others, which leads to carnage in the area, they are just that powerful. Ferrazoro have three retractable blades, two within their hands and one on the tip of their tail. They're constantly honing not only their bodies but also the blades, striking them against harder and harder materials till the blades can cut anything. A Ferrazoro that is able to cut through the hardest materials are considered the strongest of all. Despite their looks and nature, they protect weaker Pokemon, with no reason except to keep peace and justice. When they aren't training or fighting and protecting, they fall into deep slumbers, partially brought on by fermented berries they stash within their caves. Ferrazoro have the ability Sharpness and Justified. For Zoro's team, we got Ferrazoro, the premier sword Pokemon Aegislash, another sword Pokemon with Seraledge, a sword head Pokemon in King Gambit, and great for the Wano connection. Samurott normal for the same reason, and ending with a Gallade. All the sword mons. Pretty much the same team as what I did for the Demo Knight and TF2 vid, but swords be swordsmen. I am never gonna let you go. <laughs> Let's talk about Nami next. Can you guess who the animal will be for the cat burglar Nami? Yeah, this one was obvious, but the biggest thing would be all the other parts surrounding her. I hated Nami originally, the fact that she just totally screwed over the crew early on made me mad. But now I get it. Nami has a lot to do with navigation and weather and stealing, so I think a sassy weather cat works well for her. I didn't want to do like a Lopony or Salazzle for this, you know what I mean. I think that'd be a bit of a silly design, but I did want to incorporate some of the patterns and parts from her time skip outfit to the design. I included a little burgle or mask to it as I thought it was a cute little element to add. Nami's weapon, the climb attack, was something I wanted to put into this as well as Zeus, but I didn't want it to be two Pokemon in one and more like a cast storm deal where maybe the cloud coming from her tail would change to suit the weather. Colors, I went with a simple orange and white scheme for the obvious orange hair that's pretty iconic on Nami. I didn't want to include any extra blue parts from the tail as that all comes in the shiny instead. Nimbus, the weather Pokemon, an electric and dark type. Nimbus are amazing forecasting Pokemon capable of showing with their tail what the weather will be up to a week in advance. It knows how useful this is and extort people in Pokemon for its use. Their tail has a small hole in it that can generate clouds. This can be used for attacking as well, but more than that, fog clouds and other distracting effects, because Nimbus is incredibly covetous and will steal anything and everything that shines. Sailors will usually have a well taken care of Nimbus on board. Keeping it happy is such a priority so that Nimbus will tell when a storm is brewing. Even if a storm takes a ship, Nimbus can float lazily away protected from the storm. Be careful with Nimbus, despite their love for shiny things, 
They are not so single-minded and will spend time casing the surrounding area to check for a trap and will stop at nothing to get their prize. Nimbus has the ability forecast, much like cast form, its primary typing changes depending on the weather. Nami's team would absolutely have the two forecast Pokemon in Nimbus and cast form. I go with Feeble and Meowth, both kind of klepto Pokemon with a love for shinies. And honestly, as a weather setting team, let's just give her two of the most famous weather setting Pokemon in Pelipper and Torkoal. We go on to Usopp now, who may be one of the most weird ones in the video. Oda said like a chameleon or armadillo for Usopp, but nah, hear me out. A skittish jungle creature with massive wigged out eyes. I'm going with the eye eye. This one would be a bit more gremlin like and less like Grafai eye. Partially the eye eye large fingers gave me a good idea too, as Usopp's slingshot was difficult to try and put onto a design. Till I thought, what if this Pokemon uses its fingers like slingshots instead? And it all just snowballed from there. I'm not a big fan of Usopp. The live action actually fixed a lot that I had wrong with him. But in the main series, his cowardice just gets grating. And while he has his moments, I just can't with him. I really hope he gets some kind of character development soon with where we probably are going after Egghead. But for now, I'm not holding out for this great warrior of the seas. One thing you will notice is that I forgot something very telling from Iisop, and it was the nose. Usopp needs his long nose, although the live action didn't. But that's okay, in the end I do give it a longer nose to really bring this gremlin look and eye eye together. Iisop, the sniper Pokemon, a normal and grass type. Iisop hide deep within the jungles, with their hordes of fruit and berries. Their large eyes are so finely adjusted that they can see even the smallest movements miles away. Once they see a target they prepare by grabbing smaller berries, the harder the better, and then by slinging woven strands of hair together from their head, around their long fingers they create slingshots to defend their territory. I Aesop have a large flaw however in their cowardice. At long ranges they are confident and adept, but the closer a Pokemon gets to their home tree, they'll drop everything and run. Even if a Pokemon gets close to them, I Aesop will do everything to escape. Playing dead, smoke screens, and even using their stretchy hair as a false attack, whatever will dissuade the opponent. This tactic has saved Iisop populations though. Iisop's abilities are Sniper and Long Reach. Usopp's team starts with an Iisop, and a Carnivine for a stand-in for his attacks, a Berserker for his connection to Elbaf, an Inteleon because Soga King, although I really wish we knew who they really were. Of course, we've got to go Heracross for Heracles. And finally, I'm going to go Tropius, as it works well for the boy in Archipelago. Hey, look, I'm Sanji. Okay, which one of you ate the meat? <laughs> Next up, it's time for a very big opinion. I think Sanji is the worst straw hat. The dude's whole character is cooking and being a big ol' annoyance to any and every woman. How's that interesting? Honestly, the live action Sanji's personality was much better, and I think that's probably more because of it being modern and the medium, but yeah, let's do Sanji. I like the idea Oda gave for it being a longhorn sheep. I came at this imagining it was sort of a starter Pokemon, but I thought it was funniest to use the swirly eyebrows of Sanji as these horns for the sheep. It all works surprisingly well. I'll admit the final design came out a bit lion-like as well, but gosh does it work considering Sanji's lore. I mean, they're kind of a genetic experiment and Chimera's a magical experiment beings. And also Sanji being a black sheep of the family, it writes itself it does. The Pokemon itself probably wouldn't have constantly burning legs so it can live up to the black leg Sanji name, but the fire would look so good in game. Flambiablo, the burning leg Pokemon of fire and fighting type. Flambiablo's legs are capable of superheating themselves with no damage to the Pokemon. This heat bursts into flames, allowing it to combine the fire with extra powerful legs, causing superheated kicks. Flambiablo also has a strange taste for cooked foods, and will reject berries and other foods that are not cooked. It will sometimes take food and roast them by juggling the food with kicks just to have an enjoyable meal. An ancient legend spoke of Flambiablo having such powerful legs they could kick the skies to fly around with no problem. 
This was found to be false and in actual fact Flam Diablo were able to leap around massive distances and gain extra height for causing flame bursts from their legs. Flam Diablo's horns are said to make wonderful medicine and even more the secret ingredient in a love potion so powerful it would work on anyone. Flam Diablo have the abilities hospitality and rivalry. Sanji's team we have Flambiablo, Chucky and a Don Dozo and Tatsugiri Curly for the all blue fishies in sushi, a Garganakal and Arbeliever, good food mons and feminine and Arbeliever, and finally for the same reason Serena, you know, feminine food mon that kicks, and it's perfect. I'm throwing out all the hot takes here. I think that Chopper's time skip is a better design fit for One Piece and is a character that would work so much better if they completely got rid of their cowardice. As Chopper has such an interesting battle ability but it's squandered with them being part of the coward free. Ah well, but Chopper is cute and fun still but come on it's already a mascot creature very close to a Pokemon. So I went a little different with it and decided to focus more on their humanoid forms in the form of Horn Point. It's quite the literal representation with some more Pokemon proportions and eyes, with some little extra parts thrown in as well. I wanted to show some Doctor in the design, but I only really could think of adding in one thing and that would be a Pormot-esque defibrillator hands, but I think that works well for this one. Definitely would be able to learn Revival Blessing and a whole load of other healing moves to boot. Doc Deer, the emergency Pokemon, a fairy and electric type. Doc Deer once only lived in cold climates where they kept to their herds, but after unknown geological events they have spread out much further, which has only been a benefit for most. They have a honed sense of healing and protection. The tufts of fur on their back store many different herbs and other natural medicinal items like a backpack, which they'll chew up into poultices for Pokemon in need. If things go wrong, Doc Deer's palms have the ability to create electricity strong enough to bring back patients from the brink. Doc Deers aren't passive Pokemon by no means, and their large horns can upturn even the heaviest of Pokemon. Their paws also have great weight thrown into them and can leave cloven marks upon their foes for years to come. Territories of Doc Deer can be found by observing cloven marks in trees or trees completely cleaved due to their attacks. Doc Deer's abilities are triage and curious medicine. Chopper's team would start with Doc Deer and throw in a Blissey and Ordino for our medical professionals. A Comfey would also not go astray here, and a Sawsbuck for obvious reasons. And finally a Swirlix, cause Chopper just loves cotton candy. Yeah. Next is best girl Nico Robin, who shares my birthday. It was meant to be. Nah, I think Robin has one of the best backstories in this series. It's tragic, but beautiful, and her and the next character comic have the best arcs in Water 7 and Annie's lobby. She's also fashionable AF, so a Pokemon needs to be as graceful and fashionable as her. I like what Oda said that Robin would be a crane. I mean, a Robin would be the funniest one, but a crane is just much more elegant. And it works really well as I can give her those Lugia-like wing hands, so that it almost works with her Devil Fruit. Which, I may say that I would have this Devil Fruit. It just seems so fun to use. I want my hand wings, damn it! As you can see, I referenced her outfit from just after the time skip for our crane here. Fez and Dippity worked really good for some inspo here as they have very similar designs. And the biggest thing was trying to include the glasses as I feel like that's a Robin staple. So I turned it into an almost striking facial mask for our Pokemon here. Typing was tough, but this one I settled on the psychic flying type and the dex entry will explain why. Arcaflor. The ancient Pokemon, a psychic and flying type. Records of Arcafla being part of ancient civilizations are numerous, and explains why they are found around sites which once revered them. It is said that Arcafla used their psychic powers to see into the past and watch their ancestors. They have the power to affect their enemies with psychic illusions, usually in the form of giant wings and talons of Arcafla's. While the opponents may think these are just illusions, they still contain great psychic energy, and the damage it can cause is very much real. But for Arcafleur's opponent, it is much too late. Their beauty and elegance has caused many models to catch Arcafleur's to use in their modeling careers. 
However, Arcaflor always seemed more interested in learning from the world than doing anything as mundane as that. Arcaflor's abilities are Serene Grace and Psychic Surge. Alright, let's give Robin a team. Start with Arcaflor. And because Robin is the team's archaeologist, and also because, you know, she's friends with Frankie, it only makes sense for her to have the ancient Pokemon Golurk and Sigilyph for some ancient weaponry and pottery, a Runarigus for the Poneglyphs, a Torterra for the island of Ohara, and finally a Raging Bolt. It's kind of as big as Jaguar D Sol and a Pokemon of the past. Mmm. Good smell. Flavor. You feel it super? Because I have a super take for you all. Frankie's time skip design is so mid compared to the original Frankie. It actually hurts me. I guess it's just a big change and took a lot of what I liked about Frankie and threw it away. I thought hard about Frankie's Pokemon and the only thing I could think of was one specific idea we can only really do now since Scarlet and Violet. A future paradox mon. Oda said Frankie was a rhino and I think that works really well and it's very fun to make a paradox mon of a Pokemon that doesn't even exist or hasn't been shown yet. Come on Game Freak, I want you to do this for me before the next gen to show us a new Pokemon in paradox form. But yeah, I thought that making a Frankie rhino based off the battle Frankie, specifically the Frankie Shogun was a good way to make it work. This also ties into Egghead Island a bit with that almost toy feeling retro futurism that it does so well. I can imagine this Pokemon using its horn like some kind of Gurren Lagan character jetting forward with it becoming a huge drill, just smashing into some kind of Blackbeard based Pokemon. Which maybe one day I'll do some other characters from One Piece's Pokemon. I used Frankie's blue hair for the sort of energy colours swirling within the Paradox Mon, which I thought was very fitting. Iron Super, the Paradox Pokemon, a Steel and Psychic type. This Pokemon is a mystery to all who study it. While thought to be part of the Rhyhorn family, it lacks many features and proportions. Some have theorized that this Pokemon was made by someone with lofty dreams to create their own brand new Pokemon. It is a walking weapon contained inside of the Iron Super are all manner of different powers and abilities. Even just this drill horn is dangerous enough, but can also fire out cannon blasts and even lasers if threatened. Even though it looks slow, it is able to unleash blasts of pressurized air from its behind that launches it at astronomical speeds to gore enemies with its horn. Iron Super does have one drawback in its strange fuel source, Cola. Without it, they become incredibly sluggish and unable to use any of their weapons. Even their core light becomes dull. Iron Super has the ability Quark Drive. Frankie's team starts with Iron Super. I think because we have Iron Super, we don't really need to double up on the Golurks, so instead, we're going to have a Metagross and Magnazone, some good robot boys. I think Adele Myers works perfect as well for Frankie as well as Kling Clang and finally Iron Hands as it just feels almost like Frankie by itself. <laughs> Brooke, uh, Brooke, I really, really disliked you, but after watching the dub, yeah, I know, come at me. He has become an instant fave. All of his lines sound improvised in the best way possible. Where is this evil creature? I can't see it! <laughs> The only thing I don't like about him is the weird obsession with women just like Sanji. At least Brooke's slightly polite about it, but that doesn't help much. If you had told younger me that a skeleton would be part of the Straw Hats, I would never have believed it, but here we are, all hail the Bone Daddy Brook. Otis said that Brooke would be a giraffe, but I didn't want to do a skeleton giraffe, but instead wanted to focus on his music and soul form. This Brooke would be a floating, happy skeleton, possibly bopping along rhythmically. I didn't change too much on what was already there in soul form, only really giving it some eyes to show its overjoyedness and making it a bit less creepy. I still think that the eyelessness of Houndstone is what makes it so creepy. I also gave it some music note arms, doing that sort of zombie-esque arms down look as well as a single strand of hair like a music note. For typing I chose Ice and Ghost. Ghost is obvious, but Ice stuff I think is very much a brook thing, spine chilling and all that. It's more of a strange typing, but I think it works. Tremblecleft, the Soul King Pokemon and Ice and Ghost type. A great musician was said to be on a long cruise with their troop when a sudden illness befell everyone on board. 
Soon they were the only one left and passed, but their lingering will held on and gave birth to this Pokemon. Trembleclef are incredibly cheery Pokemon, as opposed to their other ghost type Pokemon. It loves being around people and listening to music. People who aren't immediately scared away by Trembleclef find quite the amazing musician to play along with. It can chatter its teeth together like a metronome to help keep people on the music, and its voice is hauntingly beautiful. If a Trembleclef wishes, it can use it to enthrall people and Pokemon alike, do its bidding, but rarely have they done such a thing. Each Trembleclef have their own likes in terms of music. Some love classical music and some will like rock music. Each will bounce along to different beats, even when the music is not playing. Brook's team starts with Trembleclef, a Waylord for our homie Laboon, a Krikatune to play violin with, a Houndstone, you know why, Toxtricity for time skip, Brook vibes, and finally Rillaboom, the perfect drummer for the band. Our final Pokemon and the latest official straw hat on the crew is Jinbei, the whale shark fishman, and I think that explains the Pokemon more than anything else. Jinbei will always be a big favourite, he has a great design and moveset and it's a great example of the diversity of One Piece characters and designs, and how great and weird the straw hats have become. My Pokemon idea was a whale shark that sort of has semi-humanoid design. Sharp fingers on the fins and a big underbody smile. I had to make the head a bit more whale shark like, flatter to keep it looking right. I wanted to keep Jinbei's traditional kimono in the design, but that was so hard. So instead, like how whale sharks have those cool patterns, I decided to use that for the kimono like lines instead, as well as the Sun Pirates logo as big red dots all over. I know it isn't the most out there design, but I think in game it would look awesome as a big fighting whale shark. Way Shark, the Whale Shark Pokemon, a water and fighting type. Way Shark have absolute power over water. They use it to surround themselves while out of water so they don't dry out, and will use it to strengthen their palms to attack, even shooting it out, feeling like a heavy palm from the Pokemon when the water connects. Under the water is even more of a menace, speeding around faster than any Pokemon, and using this momentum to slam into their enemies. This would cleave a ship in two if it hits. Way Sharks are usually quite passive. However, only being forced into aggression if an attacker won't back down after a superior show of force. Wayshark will swim alongside vessels they deem worthy and protect them from other Pokemon, and help the vessel through waters that would be otherwise treacherous without. This is why they are called the Helmsman of the Deep. Wayshark has the ability Swift Swim and Water Absorb. Jinbei's team would start off with a Wayshark, a Swampert or Mega Swampert as they mimic Jinbei quite well. An Urshifu water style, Sharpedo for the Arlong connection, Hariyama because it's just the on land Jinbei, and finally a Wishy Washy because it feels like both forms have a bit of Jinbei in them. Whew, that was a lot. But what did you think of the video? Comment down below your thoughts as well as like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and share this around to people who love Pokemon and One Piece. And comment if you want to see more One Piece mons in another video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Do skeletons poop? Yes, I poop.